Hey, this week at LookAd we bring you something slightly different as we take a step away from the world of supply chains and look at unspent transaction outputs, more commonly known as UTXOs. This is a topic of direct interest to the cryptocurrency community and is something we're conducting research into here at LOCAD as part of Project Terab. So Janice, perhaps a nice place to start is exactly what are UTXOs? So the UTXOs are entries in a database that basically says who owns what in the Bitcoin network. Actually, there is not uh, in the Bitcoin network, there is not like a database with names and how many Bitcoins. Instead, you have those kind of, you can think of it as, as, a, as a database of puzzles, cryptographic puzzles, and only the person who owns the Bitcoin can actually solve the puzzle. And basically it boils down to having uh, a private key that lets you sign a certain transactions with, uh, with basically uh, keys that are your secret and, the, and that's through this secret that you can actually solve the puzzle in practice you have a nice convenient wallet software that makes it very, I would say, um, simple and you don't need to know anything about cryptography or, um, or computer science. Um, it, it, it can be made very, very simple, even if underneath you have, you have all of that. Okay, so who owns what is obviously uh, fairly important and is obviously of direct interest to us, but why did we start Project Tarab? What is it we're exactly looking into here? So the, the goal of Terab is to facilitate on-chain scaling of Bitcoin. So the, the on-chain scaling means that you want to be able to have like literally all humanity on board, I mean potentially up to 10 billion humans, and, uh, and it presents some very specific uh, scalability challenges. Uh, by scalability, I mean the, the capacity to accommodate that many transactions over the Bitcoin networks. Um, processing a very, very large number of transactions entails a series of, challenge, uh, of challenges. And um, Terab is only addressing one of those challenges, which is the, um, the management of the UTX, so the management of this database, that is who owns what. Okay. I think it'd be very useful probably for our viewers, it definitely would be useful for me if we sort of go very much back to basics. So how do these transactions actually work in practice? From an end user perspective, you just have a nice app that is a wallet and uh, the wallet displays how, ma how many bitcoins do you have and um, you can scan, you know, um, let's say a, a QR code that is the address of a Bitcoin address of somebody you're sending email, uh, money to and, and send the money. So it, it can be made very user friendly, like um, select recipient, choose amount and, and send. Now, under the hood, what is happening is that when you are sending money through the Bitcoin network, what is happening is that there is a change in the consensus on who owns what. You see, money is not, there is nothing that truly moves. What, what is actually changing is um, the consensus on who has how many Bitcoins. So um, when you're actually sending a transaction, what is happening is that you have, uh, uh, I would say, a message that is broadcast across the Bitcoin network, which is named a Bitcoin transaction and the net result of propagating this transaction is that all the participants in the Bitcoin network will update their database of who owns what, which is the UTXO dataset. That's basically modifications of the UTXO dataset. So uh, a transactions reflect a certain change from one state of the UTXO, which is a certain state of, the, of this database, to a, a newer state that has been updated. Okay, and why are we talking about scalability? Because I thought the whole sort of idea behind Bitcoin is there's a limited amount of Bitcoins. There's around sort of 21 million Bitcoins out there. So why is scalability such a problem? There is no maximal network capacity of 21 million person with each one having one uh, Bitcoin. Actually, a Bitcoin can be uh, divided uh, into right now, Right now, the, the standard is to be, you, you, you are able to divide it into 100 million Satoshis, which is a very, very small amount. And um, the challenge is not um, to 
manage the fact that you have many, many Bitcoins is to um, make sure that you can actually update the database, the consensus on the set on who owns what, sufficiently rapidly to accommodate many people who are transacting at the same time. Because the idea is that all the people to know if, um, you know, um, a Bitcoin transaction is valid. You have a certain set of requirements and one of them is that when you're sending money, you have this money. Thus, you need to have an up-to-date version of this data set to be able to validate an, if an incoming transaction that is being propagated across the network is valid or not. Which begs the question is, can you keep up uh, do you have a system that can keep up with a large number of transactions? And that's where you have a scalability um, challenge because um, if there is a lot of people who are transacting on the Bitcoin network, they can be a lot of transactions. Okay, so let's talk about this database in a little bit more detail. I'm guessing as Bitcoin grows and as Bitcoin becomes more adopted, this database is con going to continue to kind of grow and it's going to continue to become more complex. So how are you making that sort of use of data more efficient? How are you going to actually scale to that? The first step in terms of data management for Bitcoin is to shift from working with a full blockchain to the UTXO. So the, the, the full blockchain is the complete history of all the transactions. So basically the Bitcoins appear out of thin air every single time that the block is mined. That's the way um, this, uh, the, the, the Bitcoin works, is that new blocks crea get created on average every 10 minutes. When you, when you see a Bitcoin, you can trace it back through its history of transactions to its genesis block where it was actually uh, minted. But the reality is that you do not need to have this entire history of transactions to, um, to operate the Bitcoin network. You just need to have a fresh copy of who owns what. That's the difference between the, the blockchain and the UTXO. The blockchain is a complete history of transactions. The UTXO is just um, the instant state of who owns what. And um, the UTXO is actually um, uh, about two orders of magnitude smaller than the blockchain. So one, one step towards scalability is just first to move to, uh, toward the UTXO. So that's, that's uh, the, the whole idea of, of actually pruning the blockchain. So you keep only the parts that are required to keep the network operating and not uh, things that you want to keep just for forensics or data mining on the, the blockchain. Okay, so we've pruning, pruning the blockchain, I think that's quite a nice way to sort of sum it up. So let's talk about Project Terab itself then. Um, what are the key sort of challenges you've faced so far with the project? So the, um, fundamentally managing the UTXO is um, a variant of a, a problem known as a key value store. So um, it's basically the keys are what are commonly known as out, uh, out points in the Bitcoin terminology. So that's really the, the thing where um, every single Bitcoin or fraction of Bitcoin is attached to an outpoint. And an outpoint has something that is like a cryptographic challenge attached. Uh, and and the, per the, the, the person that can solve this challenge is basically the owner of those Bitcoin attached to an outpoint. And what we want for Terab is um, an implementation of this key value store that has uh, several good properties. Uh, one of them is to make an excellent use of the underlying hardware. You see, because most of the software that we are using nowadays is dramatically inefficient. I mean, when you think of it, for example, let's say Windows used to run with four megabytes of memory. Nowadays, if you don't have four gigabyte of memory, it's going to be sluggish. But um, it's not as if, you know, your latest version of Windows was doing things that are like completely radically different from what was done 20 years ago. Uh, but because the hardware becomes so, uh, so much more powerful, 
the software that you had become a lot more bloated, it's more important for the software companies to develop something better looking or more capable at the expense of efficiency with respect of the hardware. So one of the things that we are trying to do is to have a, um, an implementation of the UTXO dataset that really max out what you can get from a, a, a given hardware investment. Now, at this point for, low, um, for the Terra project, we are basically looking at an appliance that would be something like under $20,000. And that would process uh, blocks that are up to one gigabyte. But hardware efficiency right now is not the only concern. We have a series of other concerns as well. Okay, let's talk a bit about the volume of transactions you're sort of talking about here. How does that relate to things such as credit cards that are a bit more widely adopted? What sort of volume of transactions are we talking about? Um, so the volume of transactions that you have on, I would say, let's say um, Visa or MasterCard, you know, credit card, we are talking of networks that can sustain throughputs of something like 50,000 transactions per second. But um, what makes in the case of Visa or MasterCard scaling much easier is that those systems are centralized. So they can decide uh, that, for example, all the transactions done in France will be uh, managed by a, a, a French system. That all the transactions that are done in Switzerland will be managed by a system in Switzerland, etc. So they can, they can, because the system is centralized, they can very easily partition their network so that on every single region, they ha in the end, they end up with um, a much lower, uh, a number of transactions per second that is much lower than that. Um, the, the, the specificity of Bitcoin is that it's a global network that is like completely unified and you can't really shard it. You can't just say, I'm, I'm going to only care about um, the, the Bitcoin transactions that originate uh, from France. For example, that doesn't ma make really sense. There is nothing country specific in Bitcoin. So basically Bitcoin the, it, it's, is an all or nothing sort of thing where you have to either process pretty much all the Bitcoin transactions or none of them. If you want to, to, to be able to validate them and maintain this UTXO data set, which is a complete database of who owns what. And if the scale of transactions are sort of 50,000 for sort of credit cards at the minute, what would it be at the minute for Bitcoins and what are you looking for it to grow to in the near future? It would be probably something like a few tenths of gigabyte per block. Um, if we're talking of this of, um, of, uh, of 50,000 transactions per second. And right now we are talking of a few hundred transactions per second. And, um, and Terab, uh, we are actually, our first milestone would be to provide one component that can process something up to probably a few thousand transactions per second with our first milestone. Okay, uh, and let's talk about Project Terab in a bit more detail. Um, who are the key sort of stakeholders and what are their interests in the, in the project? So um, we, have, we have three key uh, stakeholders. Um, the first two are the sponsors, the people who are actually funding the project, it's um, uh, CoinGeek and Enchain. They have been extremely active in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Their, their end game is a worldwide adoption of Bitcoin. And uh, although I, I can't speak for them, I would say as far as they are concerned, probably they would say that uh, Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. Um, so basically they are funding uh, Terab because it's, it's one of the component that can help Bitcoin to scale to I would say, mankind level of adoption. And then the third uh, st stakeholder is LOCAD, who is actually in charge of conducting this implementation. And this is an open source project that represents the, the implementation of this blockchain-centric key value store to intended to manage the UTXO dataset and the hardware recipe that is also going to be open. That is basically what you need in terms of hardware um, to get the nominal performance that you're, that, uh, from, uh, from Terab, the software. And I guess sort of the, the final key stakeholder is going to be the end user. So who's this actually designed for? End users 
um, like, like, you know, people who just want to use Bitcoin, we never need to even get close to Terra. It's basically intended as a backend for a full node implementations. So Terra is intended as, as, a, as like a database backend for full node implementation. So when Bitcoin Cash was forked, the implementation that led the fork was Bitcoin ABC. So basically, Terab could become one of the backend that can be used by Bitcoin ABC, but there are also implementation uh, for Bitcoin. So there is Bitcoin SV, uh, a fresh uh, initiative from one of our sponsors. And there is also probably uh, worth mentioning, there is Bitcoin Unlimited. And there are a couple of others that are also very interesting. There is something like six or seven uh, full node implementations. And the idea is that uh, Terab, we want to be relatively agnostic of the specific implementation. It's just a database backend that, is, that has an affinity to um, um, the Bitcoin architecture itself. It's, it's, it's stuff that has been uh, pretty much invariant since, uh, since the launch of Bitcoin. I mean, not exactly, but, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's very slow moving at least. And you mentioned the fork there. I'm I assume a few people will be watching from an investment perspective. Um, so there's a hard fork planned in November for Bitcoin yes. Cash, correct? Um, will this have any impact upon that? Um, no, as far as Terab is concerned, the changes that are being on, that are, um, on the table for the, uh, the upcoming fork have, have no impact on, on Terab. Um, except, I mean, some uh, Bitcoin SV, for example, is, wants to um, increase the block size to 128 megabytes. So that, I would say, increase the degree of urgency of having projects like Terab released and production grade. Uh, but other than than just um, uh, other than that, the, the features that are being discussed have no impact whatsoever on Terab. Okay, and to start wrapping things up. Um, when can we sort of expect some of the main out outputs from the Terab initiative? So we expect uh, to have something probably like an alpha alpha version released before the Kongi conference in in November. And we hope to be also able to demonstrate some performance metrics about our early implementation also for the Kongi conference. Okay. And to conclude, what are your sort of your main hopes of the Terab initiative? Uh, the main hope is to make the whole UTXO challenge so boring that people would not even say that it's a challenge anymore. They would just say, well, it's a piece of cake. You just have this piece of software that is, um, I would say, um, very boring, very simple, very time-tested, and so it's uh, it, it 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 has become something uh, I would say excessively mundane. That's the end game is to have something that is so boring that nobody cares about it anymore.